أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورسلا قد قصصناهم عليك من قبل ورسلا لم نقصصهم عليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته والحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد We are continuing slowly in our uh, trajectory in our series of the prophets the stories of the series of the prophets and today inshallah ta'ala we will begin part one of the next major figure in uh, the Quran and that is the prophet Nuh alayhi salam uh, and uh, today's lecture will be somewhat tedious, but it is a necessary step before we proceed onwards. And that is, we're going to survey what the Quran and what the Ahadith tell us about the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. So today's lecture is going to be uh, basically the background information from our textual traditions. And then inshallah, we'll go on and try to reconstruct and maybe bring in some other aspects as well uh, of uh, inter interesting tangents that are necessary for the story. But today we're gonna have to do the part one, if you like, of the uh, longer project of trying to look at the story chronologically by first giving us the data points because as I've said multiple times what we are especially interested in is what the Quran and what our Prophet ﷺ said everything else to me is secondary actually tertiary everything else we can take and accept and reject and we can criti critically analyze and whatnot but if anything is in the Quran and if it's something that it is confirmed our Prophet ﷺ said for us this is what is sacrosanct and everything else, and this includes, by the way, the reports of the companions, as we said multiple times, they took from the Israeliyat, they took from the Judeo-Christian sources, and uh, we know we can respect you know, that tradition, but we don't have to have it binding on us. So, we begin. The name of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, it occurs in the Quran 43 times. 21 of them are in longer sections about his story, and the rest, you know, the, the rest of them are basically in passing. They're not really, Allah is mentioning a long list of prophets and Nuh is mentioned uh, in there. So we are interested in the sections or the passages that give us information about Nuh alayhi salam. As for Allah mentioning a series of prophets and we sent Nuh and we sent uh, Ibrahim and whatnot, okay, that's there. And definitely it's important to believe in, you know, uh, this, but it doesn't give us any extra information other than the prophet Nuh was sent. So. What do we learn from the Quran about the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? We're gonna mention some of the primary uh, st uh, stories and sections in the Quran. And in some cases, we will go over them verse by verse because I believe it is important to do so. So the first time that his story is mentioned in somewhat detail is Surah Al-A'raf verses 59 to 64. Surah Al-A'raf verses 59 to 64. And in this section, it mentions that we sent Nuh to his people and that he called them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the uh, Prophet Nuh was accused of being misguided and he defended himself and he presented his message forcefully as a response and then his people were destroyed because of their rejection and Allah saved the Prophet Nuh and his followers. So Surah Al-A'raf is one of the earlier uh, uh, sections that were revealed and by the way, all of the times the Prophet Nuh is mentioned, it is in the Meccan surahs. No, there is no reference of Nuh alayhi salam in the Madani surahs every time, uh, meaning the longer, uh, I, I mean here the stories that we find in the Quran. As for a brief passing mention, this might be, but anytime the story is mentioned in even a little bit of detail, they're all in the Meccan surahs. Also, what we find here is that the stories of Nuh alayhi salam form the dual purpose of number one, teaching us about the past, and number two, every time the story of Nuh alayhi salam is mentioned, you clearly find within it something that is automatically applicable to the Prophet and Mecca. This is a very interesting motif that without exception, every single time the Prophet Nuh is mentioned, there are details and the situation is set up such that there are clear parallels to the Quraysh and to the people of Nuh. And to Nuh 
and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what is happening to Nuh and his people, it is as if history is repeating itself and the same exact thing is happening to our Prophet Sallallahu and the Quraysh. And in this is consolation to our Prophet Sallallahu you're not the first. And in this is warning and threats to the Quraysh that be careful if you don't listen and follow what happened to Nuh alayhi salam and his people will be happening to uh, you as well. And in Surah Yunus 71, in Surah Yunus 71 uh, onwards, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, relate to them, O Prophet, the story of Nuh. إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنْ كَانَ كَبُرَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَقَامِ وَتَذْكِيرِ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ If my presence and my reminders to you of Allah are unbearable to you, then know that I have put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَجْمِعُ أَمْرَكُمْ So devise a plot against me along with your false gods. And you do not have to be secretive about your plots. Then carry out these plots against me without delay. In other words, what he is telling them, if you are so powerful as you claim to be, and if you have the upper hand, then get your false gods if they are real, because they're not real. And you are threatening to implement some torture against me. You're threatening to kill me. You're invoking your gods against me. So Nuh is saying, do what you will. And if your gods can do something against me, I challenge you, do what you can. As for me, then I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, I have my Lord and you do not have, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your side. And Nuh tells them that no matter what you do or you say, my message is clear and my sincerity is clear. This is also very clear throughout multiple times when Allah mentions Nuh. One of the key phrases in the prophetic story of Nuh is لا أسألكم عليه مالا لا أسألكم عليه أجرا I'm not asking for anything in return for this. I'm not getting anything from you. From, from all of this, we seem to indicate, or there is an indication I should say, that the people of Nuh were very, very materialistic. And the people of Nuh were very greedy. And they kept on assuming an agenda for his message, a materialistic agenda. And Nuh is constantly saying to them, I have nothing to gain. There is no money I want from you. You're not benefiting me. My salary is not coming from you. I'm not asking for any worldly gain. In ajriya illa ala Allah. Allah will reward me for all that I am doing. So, فَكَذَّبُوهُ They rejected him still. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَمَمَعَهُ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ خَلَائِفِ We saved him and those who were with him in the ark. So now we learn of the ark. So Allah is telling us there is a fulk. Fulk is a ship, or we call it, of course, the Ark of Noah. Of course, uh, you know, the, the term Ark is coming from the Bible, and the Ark is basically a large ship. The Quran uses the term, you know, fulk, and the fulk, يعني, it, it could be any uh, type of shirk. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ خَلَائِفَ So we learn here, the descendants of Noah and the people on the ship of Noah, we made them the successors. So there is an indication in the Quran that all of mankind was destroyed. We're gonna come back to this point. So again, I'm just laying it out for now. I will come back to this point. But there are indications, and this is one of the verses. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ خَلَائِفَ The people in the ship became the people who took charge of the earth. Everybody else was destroyed and they were the ones who succeeded mankind. They were the ones who became the khala'if of mankind. And we drowned, aghraq, we drowned. So now we learn how were the people who rejected Nuh uh, uh, gotten rid of? They were drowned. Those who rejected Nuh, they were drowned. And Allah says, look at what happens to those who have been uh, warned. So this is in uh, Surah Yunus verse 71 onwards. The next section, Surah Hud, Surah Hud, verse 25 onwards, that Allah says in the Quran that Allah sends Nuh as a proclaimer and a warner, and he tells them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And uh, the disbelieving chieftains of his people said, Ma naraka illa basharam mithlana. So those of the chieftains, the mala, the elite, the powerful, the rich, they said to Nuh, ما نراك إلا بشرا مثلنا. We see that you're a human like us. And وما نرى معك. We only see with you 
أراذلنا the lowest amongst us بادي الرأي those who are hasty in accepting something without thinking وما نرى لكم علينا من فضل we don't think you are better than us بل نظنكم كاذبين rather we think that you are liars now once again this motif elitism social status the demeaning of those who accept Islam and by the way subhanallah these same motifs are in our time as well those who reject Islam they say what is your prophet he's immortal those who reject Islam they say what has your civilization done you are the low class we are the elite class we have wealth we have power and your countries look at the GDP your countries look at the Nobel Prize your country look at this and that and so they dismiss and diminish and they impugn the intellect of those who follow the faith. Just like the Prophet Nuh's uh, followers and the uh, uh, rejectors said that وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكَ That uh, the, those that are with you are رَاذِلُنَا They are the lowliest amongst us. بَادِيَ الرَّأِي بَادِيَ الرَّأِي here it means they're hasty and impulsive. They are not intellectuals. They're not smart people. They are the low class. And so they are being smeared in both ways. Number one, wealth. And number two, intellect. And subhanAllah, we can flip it around and we can say that wealth and arrogance, because what intellect does sometimes it leads to arrogance, a lot of times it leads to arrogance, that a lot of times social status and arrogance are the main factors that impede people from submitting to the truth. And when people are not socially wealthy, when they don't have distractions, when they are persecuted, right? Actually, they're able to think more freely. And when they have wealth and power and status, a lot of times it intoxicates a person, meaning intellectually. And the truth becomes clouded because of class, because of wealth, because of whatever else they have been given. And we see this constantly throughout history, including from the time of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. And that's why the Prophet Nuh says that, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ كُنْتُ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّي What if I have proof from my Lord? وَآتَانِي رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِهِ And my Lord has given me a mercy فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ That you are blind to see. In other words, Nuh is saying the constant thing that every Prophet and us should say as well. And that is, why don't you judge my message? Forget wealth, forget GDP, forget what you think is intellect. Look at the message, basic theology, the purpose of life, who created you. فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ You are blind to what I am preaching. You are judging me based upon secondary things, based upon the wealth and clothes I'm wearing, based upon the status of my followers. Why don't you judge me based upon the message? And this is what we should say. And again, this is powerful da'wah, brothers and sisters. The truth of Islam is not based upon the GDP of Muslim countries. The truth of Islam is not based upon the number of Nobel Prizes and, and science and engineering. And by the way, if you want to go down that route, once upon a time, the Ummah was superior, but that's not a sign. That's not even because here's the point. I mean, I'm going to a tangent here, but indeed, from the 300 to the 900 or 1000 Hijrah, uh, you know, there was no doubt that the Muslim Ummah was the peak of civilization intellectually. But let's go back to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The Sahaba were not at the peak in terms of science. The Romans and the Persians and the Greeks and the ancient you know, Egyptians accomplished intellectually, scientifically, what the Sahaba did not accomplish. So what? So what? So what if they built the pyramid? So what if they you know, discovered equations and whatnot? That's, we give them credit for that, but did they think about the purpose of life? Did they understand what is the meaning of life and death? Who created them? What is gonna happen after death? This is where real salvation lies. And that science is more blessed and more important than the science of engineering and the science of medicine and the science of architecture. We're not dismissing these secular sciences. We appreciate that. That's good if we have it. But if we don't have these and we have knowledge of Allah, then that is more important to us. And if we have knowledge of Allah and knowledge of this dunya, then even better, no problem. And our religion shows us what is more important is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Nuh is saying. 
alayhi salam that Allah gave me a rahmah min indihi. Allah gave me an a rahmah. By rahmah here, what is meant our scholars of tafsir say, it is a knowledge of prophethood. The knowledge that comes with prophethood, that is what is more important. فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ You have been blinded to this knowledge. Then Nuh is saying, أَنُلْزِمُكُمُهَا وَأَنْتُمْ لَهَا كَارِهُونَ Can I force you to accept this message against your will? I cannot force you to accept this message. Oh my people, I'm not asking for a payment for this message. My reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you want me to get rid of my followers? Is that an impediment? No, I shall never dismiss the believers. For surely they will be the ones who will be blessed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather Nuh is saying to them, you are acting arrogantly, you're acting ignorantly. Then you're saying that I'm a human being? I agree with you. لا أقول لكم عندي خزائن الله. I'm not saying that I possess the treasures of Allah. ولا أعلم الغيب. I'm not saying that I have knowledge of the unseen. ولا أقول إني ملك. I'm not saying I'm an angel. Notice, Nuh is admitting because that's what all the prophets do. We are human beings like you. And through this story, we see the story to our Prophet as well. The exact same thing is being said to him through his tongue to the Quraysh. I'm not saying I'm an angel. I'm saying I'm a human being. And these people you look down upon, perhaps Allah will give them blessings. You're looking down based upon their wealth, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna give them blessing. And because of this, I shall never excommunicate them. I shall never get rid of them. If I were to do so, I would be from the wrongdoers. Now, pause here. This entire story, and again, I'm quoting you all of this is quoting straight from Surah Hud. This entire story, if we were to remove the name Hud, and put in the name of the Prophet and remove the people, the Mala, and put in the name of the Quraysh, exactly the same thing happening. It is as if the Quraysh are being told, you're not the first. These arguments, this mentality, it is as ancient as the first Rasul and the people who rejected him. Your mentality is exactly the mentality of the elite of the people of Nuh alayhi salam, and they rejected him for these exact same reasons. The Quraysh said the exact same thing to the Prophet How can we follow you when your followers are Bilal? Your followers are Ibn Ummi Maktoum. Your followers are the lowest of the low, the Mawali, the slaves follow you. We are better than them. Now, if you get rid of them and you el eliminate them, perhaps we'll think about Islam. And the Prophet is being told, don't even think about getting rid of them. Don't even think about eliminating this group. If you were to eliminate them, you will be from the wrongdoing. Then Allah says to Nuh, وَصْنَعِ الْفُلْكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَوَحْيِنَا Build the ark. Once again, the ark comes in, the ship comes in. Under our watchful eyes and, and directions. And do not plead with me for those who are going to do wrong. For those that have done wrong, for indeed they're going to be drowned. So Allah tells the Prophet Nuh, you have one commandment, build the ark. And I'm giving you a warning. Anybody who's not your follower, anybody who has not entered your faith, O Nuh, you cannot argue with me. When they drown, they shall drown. And you cannot plead with me. And Nuh understood this point. Of course, a mistake will occur as we're going to come to in a while. So, he built the ark. Allah says in the Quran, وَيَسْنُعُ الْفُلْكَ وَكُلَّمَا مَرَّ عَلَيْهِ مَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ سَخِيرُ مِنْ Whenever one of the elite passed by and he's building this ark, they made fun of it. They mocked it. What are you doing? In the middle of the desert, you're building a ship. In the middle of this land, you're building a ship. You're making fun of us. You're, 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 you're doing something foolish. Nuh responds, In minna fa inna minkum. If you're going to make fun of us, then indeed a time will come when we will be laughing at you. And you will soon find out that Allah's punishment is going to come in this world and in the next. Then Allah says in the Quran that when our command came, وَفَارَتَّنُورُ And the uh, oven burst forth. Now pause here. This phrase occurs multiple times in the Quran. وَفَارَتَّنُورُ The oven burst forth. What does this mean, the, 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 the oven burst forth? For, for now, I'll just mention two opinions. The first opinion is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh alayhi salam that there is a sign for you. That when that particular oven starts spilling, this is the sign that you must board the ark you and your followers. And when you board the ark, then wait and the water will come and you will be saved. The second opinion, وَفَارَتَّنُورُ is metaphor. That the 
ovens of the earth, basically large craters in the earth started giving forth water. Water started gushing out from the land. And Allah is calling that land wafara tanuru, that water is gushing out metaphorically. So both of these are correct interpretations. And uh, so you can say that when the sign is given to you that the pot begins to overflow. And you can say when the fountains of the earth gush forth from the grounds, then we said to Nuh, قُلْ نَحْمِلْ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّنْ زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ Hold in the ark, take in the ship a pair of every species, and all shall drown except for those whom the word has been given. And Allah says, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Only a few people believed in him. So we learn from, the, from this verse that the majority of people rejected Nuh, and the people on the ark were very few. وَقَالَ ارْكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْلِيهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا And we said, and he said, board it in the name of Allah. It shall sail and it shall cast anchor in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ رَبِّي لَغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ My Lord is indeed forgiving and merciful. And the ark set sail with them through waves like mountains. وَهِيَ تَجْزِي بِهِمْ فِي مَوْجٍ كَالْجِبَالِ So we learn here that the flood that came it was a very catastrophic flood. It was a flood that the waves were as large as the mountains, thousands of feet high. Can you imagine a wave like a mountain? That's a terrifying scene. And Nuh called out to his son that, Ya Bunay, irkab ma'ana. Oh my son, come onto the ship with us and don't be with the kafirin. And his son said, Qala sa'awi ila jabal. I'm gonna climb that mountain. That mountain will protect me from the water. And Nuh cried out in regret that today there is no protection from Allah's decree except those whom Allah has destined for. And a wave came between them. And as Nuh is watching, so his son was drowned. And وَقِيلَ يَا, يَا أَرْضُ And Allah said to the earth, swallow up your water. وَيَا سَمَاءُ أَقْلِعِي And O sky, withhold your rain. In other words, after all of this water was on the earth, Allah then said to the earth, allow the water to come down. And Allah said to the skies, stop raining. And the flood water receded. And the decree was carried out and the fulk rested on Mount Judi. So this is mentioned in the Quran, literally that al Judi, it came on Mount Judi. So the name of the mountain is mentioned in the Quran. And we said, away with all wrongdoing people. Then the famous story occurs. We're going to come back to this again today, brothers and sisters. We just have to be a bit, you know, uh, dissecting through all the verses. Then we're going to come back and look at it chronologically. Then Nuh called out to his Lord, My Lord, my son is from my family, and your promise is true. You told me that Nuh is insinuating, Nuh didn't say this, he said that the Quran actually says, In min ahli, my son is from my family. And your promise is true. And you are the most true of all judges. In other words, it is as if Nuh is saying, I thought my son would be saved. And Allah said, Ya Nuh, I didn't say your family. I said your followers. Ya Nuh, innahu laysa min ahlik. He is not of your, ahl here means followers, right? He's not of your followers. So Nuh, because the, the, the verdict came that all shall be destroyed except those with you. Right? Nuh said, my son is my family. And Allah responds back, he's not with you. And the, the term ahl can mean both family and can mean supporter. And this is where the ambiguity comes. And so Allah says, innahu laysa min ahlik. He is not of your supporters. He was certainly doing something that was unrighteous. His son did not embrace the faith. So do not ask me about that which you have no knowledge of. And I warn you from falling into ignorance. And so Nuh pleads to Allah, my, my Lord, I seek refuge in you from asking you what I have no knowledge about. And if you don't forgive me and have mercy on me, I shall be of the losers. It was then said, وَقِيلَ يَا نُوح إِهْبِطْ بِسَلَامٍ minna. Disembark the ark. Get off the ark. Peace shall be upon you. وَبَرَكَاتٍ عَلَيْكَ And blessings upon you and upon the descendants that will be with you. So this is a second Genesis. This is now the people embarking from the ark. It is as if new civilizations will come through you and your children.
Then Allah says in the Quran, this is from the stories of the unseen we are telling you, Ya Rasulullah, neither you nor your people before you knew of these stories. So be patient, indeed the ultimate outcome will be for the righteous. So this is Surah Hud, and in this Surah it is the famous passage of uh, the saving of Nuh and his uh, people and the destruction of the earth and the destruction of the people of Nuh. Beautiful imagery is given of the flood. Beautiful and powerful phrases about the water coming out and the water going back in and the water coming from the heavens and the water being told to stop uh, coming from the, from the heavens. And also the story of Nuh and his son. This is the only time it occurs in the entire Quran. It is in this uh, section over here. Uh, the next section very briefly is Anbiya 76 to 77. And in this, it simply mentions that Nuh, uh, Rabbahu, when he cried out to his Lord and Allah saved him and his family. Again, the term Ahl occurs, this is the ambiguity. The term Ahl can mean follower and it can mean family. And Allah intended to save his followers, not necessarily his biological family. Notice here the interesting phrase, from the, uh, from the large catastrophe. Al-Karb Al-Azim, from the large catastrophe. So there was a large catastrophe. How large? We're gonna to come to this point. Was it global? That's an interesting question. Does the Quran say the flood was global? We're gonna come back to this point. It doesn't, but it does say it was a large catastrophe. It was a calamity that was of a different level. It wasn't like your regular calamities. Min al-Karb Al-Azim. And Allah says, that we cause Nuh to prevail over those who rejected Allah, for indeed they were an evil people. We drowned all of them. All of them were drowned. So there is an indication that everybody who opposed Nuh, all of the rest of mankind were drowned. So this is in Surah Al-Anbiya, very briefly. Surah Al-Mu'minun, uh, verses 23 to 29. Once again, uh, similar stuff that's found, that his people accused Nuh of wanting power, wanting to be superior, and they accused him of being insane. So again, the same accusations against our Prophet So Allah commands him to build the ship. We inspired him how to build the ship. Build the ship under our watchful eyes and under our direction. So now we are taught, we are told in the Quran, that the mechanism of how to build the ship, Nuh did not know it. He wasn't a shipbuilder, but Allah told him how to build the ship. And Allah gave him directions how to build the ship. Then when our command came, tanur, the exact same phrase that occurred in the past is occurring here. tanur, the ovens burst. What does it mean? I told you two opinions. Number one, the sign was when the ovens burst forth, ride the ship. And number two, metaphorical imagery for the earth giving forth water. Take on board a pair of every species. So once again, the exact same phrase, take on board a pair of every species along with your family, except for those whom the decree has been given, they're going to drown and do not plead with me for them, for they will not be uh, saved. Then when you and those who are with you are settled upon the ark, say, Alhamdulillahi najana min al and pray to Allah, O oh my Lord, allow me a blessed landing, for you are the best one who accommodates. So this is in Surat Al Mu'minun 23 to uh, 29. The next passage that mentions the story is Surat Al Shu'ara, verses 105 to 122. And again, similar motif here, very uh, uh, beautiful uh, language in the Quran. Surat Al Shu'ara is one of my favorite surahs. It's a very, very powerful, the imagery and the words and the rhythm and rhyme of the surah is very beautiful as everybody uh, is aware. And Nuh advises his people, telling them to worship Allah, telling them that he is sincere, uh, uh, and saying to them that he's not wanting anything from them, telling his people uh, that uh, he is a prophet sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this section, we also learn his people mocked him once again because of his followers, because of the low class of his followers. His people wanted him to get rid of his low class followers. And he says to them that, وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I'm not going to get rid of my followers. I'm not going to get rid of the believers. His people threatened to kill him. So Allah tells him that he's going to save him in the ark. فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْحُونَ Here's an interesting phrase that only occurs over here. فِي الْفُلْكِ الْمَشْحُونَ In the ark that was loaded to capacity. So we learn here that it was a large ship and that the ship was maxed out. 
the ship had a lot of things on it, the fully loaded ship. And then Allah says, Then we drowned al baqin the indication the rest of mankind. So the Quran does seem to allude that the rest of mankind was gotten rid of, that this was a second genesis and a beginning. In Surah Al-Ankabut, verses 14 to 15, Surah Al-Ankabut, we learn one new thing in this section that is not found anywhere else. One key fact is mentioned in this section. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Indeed, we sent Nuh to his people. And he remained amongst his people أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ A thousand years إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ Except for 50. So clearly here we are told a new fact, a new information. And that is that Nuh remained amongst his people for 950 years. This is explicit in the Quran. Therefore, we will have to come back to this point. The Quran is giving us a piece of information about how long the Prophet Nuh preached amongst his people. Then the flood overtook them and they were wrongdoers, but we saved his people and we saved him in the ark and we made it a sign for all of mankind. So this is Ankabut 14 to 15. Surah Safat 75 to 82. Surah Safat, and again, powerful surah, powerful imagery. Again, the, the, the language of Surah Safat is again, you know, top notch Meccan, uh, symptomatic of the Meccan revelations, very uh, uh, powerful imagery and very uh, rhyming verses. So, uh, Nuh cried out to us. So, we learn from this and from other uh, verses in the Quran that Nuh alayhi salam was threatened. And Nuh alayhi salam felt powerless. And they were going to kill him. And so trapped and stuck, he makes dua to Allah to save him from his people. Nuh is invoking us to save him. And we are the ones to respond. And what an excellent responders we are. Once again, the great distress, the great calamity. وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ This is very explicit. We made his descendants the sole survivors, الباقين. It is therefore quite clear, and we're going to come back to this point, that the Qur'an is saying, nobody was left of mankind except the descendants of Nuh alayhi salam. وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ And we blessed him with honorable mention amongst the later generations. سَلَامٌ عَلَى نُوحٍ فِي الْعَالَمِينَ Peace be upon Nuh amongst all of mankind. All of mankind owes Nuh something. All of mankind owes Nuh and the descendants of Nuh something. And of course what that thing is is that Nuh alayhi salam is the second father to all of us, right? We're going to come back to this point that it's quite, you know, it's not even indirect, it is quite direct that we made him and his progeny the baqeen of all of mankind. The next section, Surah Al-Qamar, verse 9 to 14. Surah Al-Qamar, verse 9 to 14. And again, Qamar, again, symptomatic of the Meccan surahs, powerful language here. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ Before then, the people of Nuh denied the truth, right? And uh, uh, the people of Nuh denied, عَبْدَنَا They rejected our servant. وَقَالُوا uh, مَجْنُونٌ And they called him insane. And he was intimidated. فَدَعَا رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ He called out to his Lord, I have been overpowered, so help me. إِنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ فَفَتَحْنَا أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَاءٍ مُنْهَمِرْ We opened up the gates of the heavens with pouring water. وَفَجَّرْنَا الْأَرْضُ عُيُونًا And we caused the earth to burst forth with springs. فَالْتَقَ الْمَاءُ So the waters met. In other words, the waters of the earth and the waters from heavens. This is again powerful imagery here. Right? The waters from the earth are gushing forth and the waters of heaven are coming down. عَلَىٰ أَمْرٍ قَدْ قُدِرْ For a faith that, that was already met. وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ وَدُسُرٍ And we carried him of, on something that was made of wood and of nails. Now this is a very unique point mentioned in this surah, not mentioned anywhere else. The construction of the ark. What was the ark made of? وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ ذَاتِ أَلْوَاحٍ 
We carried him on something, thati. Yani uh, on the, it doesn't say ark, it doesn't say ship in, in Surah Qamar. However, the other surahs mention fulk, and so the fulk is a ship. In this surah, we are told, what is the ship made of? Alwah. Alwah is wooden planks. And dusur, thati alwahin wa dusur. Dusur, nails. So, planks and nails are being used. Tajri bi a'yunina. It is sailing under our watchful eyes. Jaza, and it is a fair punishment for those who uh, kufir, for those who were uh, on behalf of those who denied. So, in this surah, we learn that the ship is built out of wood and planks and nails. And that is something, again, we're going to come back to, to mention again, the, the, what we can understand from the historical reality of this, uh, uh, of this time frame. And when was it? We're going to come back to this point as well. Uh, the final uh, surah that we'll mention is, of course, the longest surah about Prophet Nuh salam, and it is a surah that mentions his story from beginning to end. In other words, Surah Nuh itself. Now, there are only two surahs in the Quran that are completely dedicated to the stories of the Prophets. The longer one and the more unique one is Surah Yusuf. We're going to come back to that. The other surah is Surah Nuh. Surah Nuh from the first ayah to the last ayah is about a Prophet. And this is a blessing given to the Prophet Nuh in the Quran that only the Prophet Yusuf shares with. No other Prophets other than Nuh and Yusuf have a dedicated story to them. None of the Prophets have a dedicated surah to them, except for two. And this is an indication of the blessings of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. The Surah Yusuf, of course, we're all aware, and, and that is, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna come back to this, that of course Surah Yusuf has multiple unique and blessings. The only other Prophet that has an entire chapter and an entire surah named after him and revealed to give his story is Nuh alayhi salam. And of course, we have to quickly go over it because it is the entire, it's only a page long, a page and a few ayat long, that Allah says in the Quran, Inna arsalna Nuhan ila qawmihi. We sent the Prophet Nuh to his people, proclaiming to his people to warn his people of an impending punishment. Qala Nuh, Nuh said to his people that, O my people, I am sent to you with a clear warning to worship Allah alone, to fear Him and to obey Him. If you do so, He shall forgive your sins and He shall give you time until the Day of Judgment. You're going to live a peaceful life and the Day of Judgment will then come and you will have to answer to uh, Him on that day. And uh, when that time comes, it cannot be delayed uh, if only you knew. He cried to his Lord, قَالَ يَا, قَ قَالَ يَا, يَا رَبِّي O my Lord, إِنِّي دَعَوْتُ قَوْمِي لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا I have called my people day and night. فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا But my calls have only made them run farther away. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ Every time I invite them uh, so that you may forgive them, they press their fingers into their ears and they cover themselves in their, in their clothes and they persist in their denial and they act very arrogantly. ثُمَّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُهُمْ جِهَارًا then I call them openly and publicly. Then I preach to them publicly and in private. And I say to them, Seek your Lord's forgiveness, for indeed He is most forgiving. He will shower you with abundant rains, and He will supply you with wealth and with children, and He will give you gardens as well as rivers. What is the matter with you? Are you not in awe of the majesty of Allah, even though He created you in stages? Do you not see how Allah created the seven heavens, one above the other, placing the moon within them as a flight and the sun as a lamp? Allah Azza wa Jal caused you to grow forth from the earth like a plant, and He will return you to it, and He will then bring you forth again. And Allah made this earth a vast place for you to walk and created valleys and pathways for you. Nuh cried out that, Rabbi, innahum asawni. Oh my Lord, they have disobeyed me. And instead of following me, they have followed the elite. Those whose abundant wealth and children only increase them in their arrogance and in their loss. And they have devised a tremendous plot against me. Pause here. So we now learn from this and from multiple verses that the people were gathering together to kill him. The people had a plot. We don't know the details of this plot, but the Quran references it multiple times. That Nuh's people had gathered together to massacre, to kill Nuh and his followers, right? And they said, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ Do not abandon your idols. Now we get to 
one point in this surah which is only mentioned here and that is of course the surah also mentions the uh, the graphic reality of how they rejected Nuh. They put their hands in their ears, they covered themselves up, they didn't want to hear the teachings. Now they said, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ Do not abandon your idols. وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُوَاعًا وَلَا يَغُوثَ وَيَعُوقَ وَنَصْرًا Five idols are mentioned here. So this is the only time in the whole Quran that the idols of the Prophet Nuh are mentioned. Wad and Suwa and Yaghuth and Ya'uq and Nasr. So these are five idols that are mentioned in the time of the Prophet Nuh. So Allah Azza wa Jal says that those have led many people astray. Then uh, Nuh alayhi salam makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That waqala Nuhun. Nuh said that Rabbi la tether ala al-ardi min al-kafirin al-dayyara Oh my Lord, do not leave a single kafir on earth Now once again, we get to this very clear indication from the Quran Nobody from mankind was left on earth No one was left other than Nuh and his followers And this is very explicit in this surah here That Rabbi la tether ala al-ardi min al-kafirin al-dayyara Do not allow a single disbeliever or a single household of the disbelievers to remain, if you were to spare any of them, they will certainly mislead your servants and they will only give birth to evil people who shall reject you. And then Nuh finishes that, Oh my Lord, forgive me, forgive my parents, forgive all those who enter my house with faith and forgive all believing men and women. And as for those who reject you, then destroy them. So this is Surah Nuh, very simple, very uh, uh, beautiful imagery of the reality of Nuh and his people. So this is what we have from the Quran. What do we have from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Very little. And uh, in reality, not much is added to what we have from the Quran. In fact, we don't really gain anything extra about the history of the past. Rather, we gain some theological points. So for example, from the Ahadith we learn that on the Day of Judgment, this Hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim and others, on the Day of Judgment, the people of Nuh will say to Allah that we didn't get a messenger. And Nuh alayhi salam will say, I was sent to you. So Allah will say to Nuh, who will be your witness? Who will say that you came to them? Nuh will say on the Day of Judgment, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his ummah will testify that I preach to my people. So Allah will ask and to us, how do you know? How is your knowledge? And we will say, we believed in the Quran and we believed in your speech, Ya Allah, and in our messenger, and our messenger told us that Nuh was sent to his people, so we will testify because we believe. In other words, it's basically our faith that we believe that, uh, uh, that the Prophet Nuh was sent, and then the hadith goes on. So we learn on the day of judgment, even in that time frame, the people of Nuh will try to reject Nuh alayhi salam. So the arrogance until the day of judgment. Another hadith that mentions Nuh alayhi salam, is the famous hadith that mentions the Prophet giving the farewell address. He mentioned Nuh when he was giving his farewell khutbah. And one thing that he said there, that, O oh my people, every Nabi warned against Dajjal from Nuh alayhi salam onwards. He said this, so he mentioned the name of Nuh in the farewell khutbah, 100,000 people and he mentions Nuh alayhi salam. So from Nuh to all other prophets mentioned him by name. Mention who? Dajjal. Then the Prophet will say, I'm gonna tell you something that nobody told the previous generations and that is that he will only have one eye, that he is one-eyed. So we learn here that Nuh warned his people about the Dajjal. And uh, we also, in the famous tradition, I mentioned this tradition multiple times, it is of course weak. Uh, the famous tradition of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, which is mentioned in the uh, Sahih of Ibn Hibban, that the Prophet was asked by Abu Dhar a series of questions. One of them was, who is the first Rasul sent? So the Prophet said, the first Rasul is Nuh. Now, the hadith is weak. However, the concept is affirmed in the Quran and Sunnah. The concept that Nuh is the first Rasul, it is, 
pretty much understood from the Quran and Sunnah. And even this hadith that is authentic in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet said, every Prophet from Nuh onwards told his people about uh, uh, Dajjal. So then why did he start with Nuh? Because Nuh is a key person. Before him was only Adam alayhi salam. As we said, if Sheath and if Idris, it's a different, uh, you know, as we said as well, we're not, not certain whether they existed before after Nuh, but even if they did, they are not Rasuls to that level. Nuh is the first Rasul. Awwal Rasul in Ursul, the first Rasul that was sent is Nuh alayhi salam. And then the final hadith that we'll mention, and basically that's it from Nuh alayhi salams in the Quran and Sunnah. So today's uh, lecture was really the raw data points from the Quran and Sunnah. We're gonna come back and then redo uh, from a chronological order, which inshallah will be easier to follow. I know today was was a little bit difficult. The reason being, I need to present to you every section of Nuh and every hadith. Then we're gonna come back and re-digest it in a different manner. The final hadith we'll mention is in uh, the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. It's Hassan, authentic hadith. And it is also in the uh, the book of Adab al-Mufra by Imam al-Bukhari. It is also in the Mu'jam of al-Tabarani and others. And it is a Hassan or authentic hadith narrated from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As who said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when the Prophet of Allah Nuh was about to die, he said to his son, I shall give you my last will and testament. I'm commanding you two things and I'm forbidding you two things. And then it goes on and he says, I'm commanding you with La ilaha illallah. For verily, if the seven heavens and the seven earths were to be placed in one side of the scale, and La ilaha illallah is placed on the other side, La ilaha illallah will be heavier than the seven heavens and the seven earths. And uh, I forbid you and I command you to pray and I forbid you uh, from uh, shirk and I forbid you from arrogance. So this is the wasiyah of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam that he's telling them to stick to the kalima and he's giving them the weight of the kalima and he's telling them to uh, pray. And, uh, and then he is saying to them, I forbid you from shirk and I forbid you from uh, kibir. So this is the wasiyah of the Prophet Nuh according to one uh, version. There's other versions found that give other um, details of this, but the gist of it is the same. Now, one final point and then inshallah we are done for today. And that is, it is mentioned from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam lived 10 generations after Adam and that all of those generations were upon Tawheed. And then Nuh came. Now, this is with an authentic Isnad to Ibn Abbas. However, as I said multiple times, something that is coming from the companions, it is something that we can take, but it is not as authoritative as is coming from Allah and His Messenger. In other words, something coming from Allah and His Messenger, there is no question we must take it. Stories that come from the companions and statements that come from the companions when it comes to qasas, when it comes to stories because the companions and Ibn Abbas in particular we know used to take without any problems from the Israeliyat as we mentioned multiple times in this series. Therefore, we may narrate this but it does not hold the same definitive weight as the Quran and Sunnah. Therefore, we're going to come back to this point were there 10 generations between Nuh and Adam? Not from the Quran and Sunnah. From Ibn Abbas and also from Deuteronomy and Genesis, by the way. There's exactly 10 generations. So one could say it is possible Ibn Abbas got it from the Prophet and And one could also say it is possible Ibn Abbas got it from Kaab al-Ahbar or from any of the uh, Israeli sources. And because there's an uncertainty, because there's an ambiguity, we will halt that narration and we will say maybe there were 10 maybe they weren't Allah knows best we don't take it as a final point of faith and this is a key point because how long between Adam and Nuh how many years between Adam and Nuh and when did Nuh live and where did Nuh live all of these are questions we're going to come back to inshallah ta'ala in our next lesson and this narration of Ibn Abbas will then come back and will mention uh, you know why this data point is not definitive and how that helps us dealing with the actual story of Nuh alayhi salam when we look at it from light of uh, our understanding of the past. Inshallah we'll continue the story of Nuh, uh, Prophet Nuh in our next lesson. Until then, Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي 
أما استحييت تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى 